Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the RotoPros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to start around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. This is another EPL breakdown for Match Week 25, February 2nd, 2019. A nice Saturday weekend slate. I don't want to waste any time here. Let's jump right away into the slate. The first game we have today is Watford traveling down to the south coast to play Brighton. Southampton making a massive trip from the very bottom of England all the way up north to play Burnley. Huddersfield are traveling to London to play Chelsea. We have a London Derby here between Fulham and Crystal Palace. Wolves making a trip to, uh, up to Liverpool to play Everton. And the final late hammer of the slate we have Bourne with traveling to Cardiff. So this is a pretty weak slate. There is only Chelsea as the main big salary options of the slate. But in terms, I think there is a lot of different stands as per usual that we can take and a lot of different options that are still underpriced, especially in DraftKings. So let's jump into this right away. First game in the slate, we have Watford making the trip to Brighton. So Watford this season has been incredibly inconsistent, though, however, they have been finding a lot of results in the name of draws. So because of that, they have found themselves fairly high up the table. But I'll be very surprised as we come into the final weeks here if they make a serious push for any kind of European soccer. And chances are they'll finish somewhere between 8th to 12th place. So what's important to remember for this slate is that Watford is actually bucking the trend in terms of most teams. And they are one of, uh, I shouldn't say one of, they are better away from home than they are at home. Uh, they do have a very respectable away uh, record this season. It isn't the best, and if you look at it on paper, it wouldn't exactly jump out at you instantly. But it has been more than adequate enough to help them sit fairly high up on the table. So what the, one of the big issues for Watford this slate is that a lot of their results, or I shouldn't say this slate, in general across the season, the results aren't exactly indicative to the real-life play. So what's happening a lot is that they'll go out and they'll win games, but their DFS results will be fairly underwhelming at best. Foster is an adequate goaltender at only 4.6K. He checks all the boxes to be a relevant option on DK this slate. The big issue, obviously, is that they're at Brighton, and Brighton has been borderline an excellent team at home, where Watford just in general is mediocre good. So it's not the best keeper option, but in terms of all the boxes, is in the salary range. Foster definitely checks off uh, as a keeper that you can use in either format. And Holoboss has been a little bit underwhelming as well in terms of his cross count has dropped drastically and his salary is still up towards a, a rather untouchable zone until he starts putting in 15 crosses on the regular every single slate. And that isn't happening right now. So I think that you can safely fade Holoboss at 6K. And if you're really looking to get involved with the Watt for defense, whether as a stack for Foster or just just some overall decent value. Jan Matt absolutely fits that bill. 4.1K. You can use him in either format as a fill. Uh, Cash, he should still get 6 to 8 fantasy points and absolutely no issues. Like I said, either format, uh, he should be fine on DraftKings. The big issue for me on, for Watford on FanDuel is that Watford loved to cross the ball, but Brighton in particular play very tight defense. So in many cases, a team can cross the ball and it doesn't create very many chances created, which is how it is scored on FanDuel. So a lot of these plays for Watford are strictly DK just because uh, that cross count isn't uh, scored the exact same over on FanDuel. Now in terms of midfield, the it's really a whole lot of fades, honestly. Uh, Pereira is probably going to play 90 minutes, but he doesn't do enough with his minutes to really warrant any kind of selection, even from 5.1K. Um, in terms of Troy Deeney, you could... You could probably get away with some Dini and GPP this slate at 5.4K. Though really what you're chasing is a penalty shot goal. Uh, Brighton are definitely one of the higher conceding penalty shot teams in the league. So if you're looking to chase that, uh, I think there are worse options, that's for sure. So I don't mind Troy Dini at 5.4K in some GPP. But outside of that, I'm really not too interested in Watford, mainly because Brighton are so good at home. Uh, Brighton haven't been great as of late, and Watford have been, as I've been saying, kind of mediocre all season. So it wouldn't surprise me to see people gravitate incorrectly towards Watford, where Brighton is actually the play. And in terms of that, why is Brighton the play? Well, they have been very good at clean sheets this season, but very simply put, at home, they're an incredible team. Away from home, they're bottom of the barrel garbage team. So I have no issue generally as soon as Brighton is at home looking at them as a whole. But uh, 
as a <clears throat> slate to slate play, taking Brighton is not always the best option. Uh, they are at home. They are playing. Uh, I don't want to say an inferior opponent, but definitely not a world class opponent. And they aren't the most expensive salary. So I. I'm not as excited about Matt Ryan as maybe I would be with Foster, but I'm much more excited about Brighton than I am with Watford. So it's tough. And a lot of the reasons with Matt Ryan is his defense is absolutely brutal in DFS. Like, no options whatsoever across the board. The wingbacks don't cross. They don't get forward. They just defend. And on FanDuel, that's fine where you can take some Duncan Duffy for an extremely high salary. But that's really all you can hope for from the Brighton defense is defensive peripherals. There's not going to be any time, any attacking anytime soon. Uh, but as we go forward, I think there's a lot better options. In particular, Pascal Grobe is going to be one of my top plays this slate all around. Either format, 7.6K. You really can't go wrong with that against a team like Watford at home. Uh, so, yeah, it's tough because like Brighton aren't a good team. They're just they're not a good team. They've been playing very badly as of late. They're I think it's they've lost back to back away games, three straight games they they've lost, including a one nothing home loss to Liverpool. So like there just is no whole lot to pull for with Brighton. Uh, are they capable? Absolutely, but they're just as capable of coming off at 60 minutes than breaking a slate. Even Glenn Murray's two goals couldn't find them a victory last slate. So I'm not as keened in about Brighton as uh, other teams I am this slate, but in terms of this game, they should handle Watford to the tune of 2-1. Uh, it's going to be a very low-scoring game. No team has scored more than uh, two goals against Brighton at home than Manchester United in the first week of the season. So uh, it's just not a game where you should really hunt ceilings. So there, what we can say is that it's going to be low-scoring. So then let's attack the goaltenders. But if you look at the goaltenders here, there's really nothing to look for in GPP. So maybe some uh, Foster uh, with some Jan Matt. Uh, maybe Pascal Grobe, or I shouldn't say maybe Jan Matt, maybe if you want to go that value route. But Pascal Grobe should be one of the safer plays this slate at only 7.6K. Uh, it should be a really good route for double digits. And uh, my final score prediction for this one is Brighton 2, Watford 1. Next game on the slate, we have Southampton traveling to Burnley. Basically every slate in DFS right now, you have to ask yourself one question. One, is Burnley playing? Okay, then two, we're playing Tom Heaton. That's basically it right now. If you're new to my videos or my any of my content, basically I've been on Tom Heaton since the moment he came back from injury and I haven't left him and it's just been printing money nonstop, just instant money when you pick Tom Heaton. My rule for Tom Heaton, is he the most expensive? Is he playing a massively uh, superior opponent? And is he playing away? Uh, if you have to be afraid of those three, which we aren't this week, he's at home playing a garbage team and he's below 5K, there's nothing to think about here. Um, just... It, Anything is possible in DFS. Anything can happen. But the fact is Tom Heaton still stands as one of the better keeper options in this slate, in this league, uh, in this slate. Uh, from week to week, you can just roll with them. And 4.8K is nothing to shy away from this slate. So I have no issue with them. And if you're going to keep looking on that Burnley route, uh, you can roll with some Charlie Taylor. The thing with Charlie Taylor is that he's rarely going to score more than like 6 to 8 fantasy points in DraftKings. But the big issue is that when his salary is up closer to 5k you can't risk that low floor where now his salary has dropped back down so i have no issue with that and the same can be said with phil barsley as well if you want to chase a clean sheet it's viable uh just because their salaries are so low so i really don't mind that uh in gpp going for the burnley defensive just because it is such a sound option uh but either take uh barsley or taylor in cash uh with Heaton, and I think that's a really solid low floor, low salary. Uh, you won't be risking too much, and you can even take uh, with that Jan Matt uh, and uh, drop one of them. Let's say we'll drop Bardsley because he's the least talented of the two. Uh, so, yeah, like that's a really good start already, and we're, we're only two games deep. And it's not that Southampton are bad or that they're void of options. Neither the case. It's just Tom Heaton is that much better of a DFS option that almost voids them out, especially for GPP. And whenever we break it down, yes, we can get away with the defender. Uh, I don't mind target. His salary is getting to the point where I'm not really interested. And I would rather just take Valerie at 4.5K and roll with that. Um, it isn't my favorite. I think, obviously, you can get cheaper options than Jan Matt and 
Taylor. But if you're looking to stick around that four mid 4K range of DraftKings uh, and you're running low in salary, don't be afraid to roll with Valerie. He should do his uh, normal seven fantasy points kind of thing from only 4.5K. And you're really not risking all that much in case he comes off early because the salary is still in such a reasonable range. The midfield's tough because James Ward Prowse is a legit player. He is more than capable of putting up double digits. The issue now is that he's 8.4K on DraftKings. And let's look look at this two ways. First way is that we're taking Tom Heaton. So you really can't take JWP in either format, especially from a salary like that where it's basically demanding a ceiling. Now the second part to look at, even if we're not taking Tom Heaton, we can pretend for a second we're ignoring him and just looking at James Ward-Prowse. His salary's too high. Uh, maybe I'm being salary sensitive, but as a whole, Southampton haven't shown that kind of ceiling where his seven point or excuse me, eight point four k would out outshine a bunch of these other options like Ryan Fraser, Milicevic, even McNeil, who could probably come off at 70 minutes. Uh, Stanislaus, same thing. Wolves have been nothing short of flames the last few slates. Like, I've only gone down a few names. Uh, Johan Berg Goodmanson, who I even, I'm about to talk to. Like, All these guys are better options. And When you're looking for literally the best option this slate, it's not going to get much better than Johan Berg Goodmanson at 6.6k on DraftKings. Like, just get him in either format, fill him with cash, stack him in GPP, absolutely no issues with him whatsoever um is he my favorite play he's definitely up there Uh, he's definitely in my top three plays this slate an absolute lock from the salary uh make sure to get some johan berg goodmanson into your cards now in terms of uh the burnley forwards they're also not lacking in their own right too and we have guys like sorry uh ashley burns and chris wood uh who are putting up serviceable serviceable numbers excuse me uh but my main concern is that burns salary again is at that 8k range where you can get the exact same thing from chris wood at 6.4k now i wouldn't take either in cash uh but in gpp i'm more inclined to go with the wood side of things just for the cheaper salary because him and Barnes are going to do the exact same thing and then if you want to stack the pair of them with Johan I don't mind it if you want to stack Chris Wood with Johan I don't mind it I'd probably just take Ashley Barnes if I was going to use that and Dwight McNeil I think this slate is worth a fade the only reason is because it looks like Robbie Brady's going to be coming back and if that is the case then the McNeil is basically guaranteed to come off and his salary is no longer the five point whatever k where we can just instantly blindly put him in there 7.8 k is way too much for someone who's most likely not going to play a full 90 minutes anymore so i really like burnley a lot i think they're one of the better all-around plays this slate uh their salary they're at home and they're playing a half decently poor team um it's tough to put a score line on this. I like 2 nothing Burnley. I think that makes a lot of sense. It could very easily finish 1-1. But the main thing here is that Tom Heaton isn't too expensive. So we can get away with basically single digits at 6 to 8 fancy points. If we can clear that uh, with Tom Heaton, you'll be flying this slate. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's say 2 nothing Burnley just because I like staying on this Tom Heaton train. But it really wouldn't surprise me if Southampton find a result here because that's DFS for you. And Burnley aren't, Burnley aren't Man City or Liverpool. They can't stay this good forever. So uh, yeah, I'll say 2 nothing Burnley, but very easily 2-1 Southampton. Next game on the site, we have Huddersfield traveling to Chelsea. Um, there's really not a lot to say here. Two very bad teams at the moment. Chelsea, at least we can give them the hope that they're a far better team at home than they are away. So that's something to consider. But plain and simple, Huddersfield are just the worst, maybe the worst team in English Premier League history. Definitely the worst team in the league right now. Uh, Just no hope whatsoever. Aaron Moy came back from injury last slate, which was great. But that just kind of complicates things more now with uh, the injuries and minutes. So it it depends who they start, who's on the bench. You could probably get away with Aaron Moy and GPP for only 5.5K. I don't hate that. I definitely wouldn't roll with it in cash because Chelsea tend to stifle a lot of floors from opposition. But that's Aaron Moy is really the only place to look here at Huddersfield. They, They just don't do enough. 
Uh, especially they have a new manager and he's doing the exact same thing they were before playing extremely defensive. So I have no interest in that whatsoever. And Chelsea are in their own right worth fades here too. Uh, I know Huddersfield are the worst team in the league, but Chelsea just hasn't been impressive enough to really show off from their salaries. And on top of that, the real kicker here is that if Higuain is still in the mix, um, you really can't play him. He's just not good enough at the moment. He has... Literally, like, I don't know what else to say. Uh, that that speaks volumes for itself. So, uh, yeah, I, I would fade the ownership on Higuain. If you're going to roll with anything, just use Hazard at 9.9K. Uh, you're not really risking too much uh, from this salary. Uh, I know it is, <clears throat> excuse me, the most expensive of the slate. But generally speaking, we're used to seeing like the 10Ks and things like that. And that's where he deserves. Even in the case of Salah and other slates, he was 11.6K. And the next closest was just over 10K. So there's no real separation. And Hazard doesn't deserve to be that cheap. And now if we compare him to the rest of the slate, is he that exciting? No, not at all. But uh, in terms of just the general where to go, Hazard's absolutely in play. Uh, he, he generally will be from that salary. Um, <clears throat> I want to say something like three one Chelsea, but I don't. I don't see a route or a script that will get Chelsea two three goals. Uh, <clears throat> one nothing's probably more likely. Maybe two nothing if they get a crazy ceiling. But even in the case that Kepa gets a clean sheet, he's not going to see enough saves to offset as that high salary. So yeah, I'll say one nothing Chelsea just to keep things calm. Next game on the slate, we have a London Derby between Fulham and Crystal Palace. This is a really weird one because Fulham are, are, are up to this point. Fulham have been one of the worst teams in the league, but on paper, they're very respectable and they're not that bad of a team at all. Uh, <clears throat> on the other hand, Palace are going to be without Wilfred Zaha, and they literally went uh, like. 52 games, I think it was, straight games without a victory, without Wilfred Zaha. Uh, so, take it for what it's worth. It's, without Zaha, Palace tends to absolutely crap the bed and not show up and do nothing. And Fulham are coming off of a major game against Brighton where they found four goals. It's tough. They're never... <clears throat> I shouldn't say never. They're not going to get a clean sheet this century, so we can avoid that. Uh, Brian just doesn't get it done from that salary, so I'd rather take Callum Chambers from 4.3K. I'm a little bit concerned that he got a goal last slate, so it does feel like a little bit we're chasing points, but as a whole, he's been a go at, as a floor play all season, so I really don't dislike um, Callum Chambers at only 4.3K here this slate. Now, um, outside of that, it's really tough to peg what Fulham are going to do away from home. They've been so bad this season that it's like borderline wait and see just to, just to see what they're going to do from here on out. Their four goals last slate wasn't that much of an outlier as much as if it was now. We have to worry about people trying to chase all these goals and they may even find them coming up against Crystal Palace. That's the concern I have here. I don't want to skip out on Fulham. And as always, Sherla and RSS are great players. In real life, it just doesn't translate at all whatsoever into DFS relevance. And Sari has been playing really well too uh, and putting up decent floor numbers. Uh, and 4.5K isn't that big of an ass. So I really have no issue with that in this slate either. But I, I don't feel comfortable taking more than one Fulham player. So you're kind of having to choose between the, the pairing of uh, Sari as the midfielder or uh, they're both center midfielder, excuse me, or Callum Chambers playing up. And as the forwards, you, you could roll with Mitrovic if you want GPP. As I was saying though, like people are going to chase this. It's going to draw tons of ownership and it's just as likely to end like all the other games uh, very low single digits as he is to find double digits again. So um, it, it's not that Crystal Palace are bad. They've just been really bad without Zaha. And yeah, it's frustrating because I want to say that they should just get pounced. But they've been slightly better this season. They're at home. They have a few really, I should say, 
a few. They have far more relevant DFS options than guys like Juan Binsaka. And when you're looking at something like that, the 5.3K range, he absolutely smashes his range. So I have no problem with someone like that, though it isn't my favorite play. I just wouldn't talk you out of it. And I think Townsend, someone you're going to need this slate at 9K. Um, his salary is at that range where if you look around him, uh, people just aren't putting up the same numbers. Now, we could talk about Siggy in a bit here, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's hard to have, uh, I hate Crystal Palace sometimes because they're supposed to be simple and they never, never, never are. Uh, without Zaha, we should see a few more minutes, but I probably wouldn't stray too far outside of Townsend, um. He's the only guy that really makes sense. Maybe if you want to try Milchevec and GPP, but 7.8K, there just isn't a lot of reason for me on that, unless Palace get like two penalty shots or something weird. Uh, so yeah, I will, uh, I'll stick with just the Townsend here for cash or GPP, get him in this slate. I prefer it for cash though, because I just don't see the ceiling coming uh, from Palace without Zaha. I also don't really see a win coming for Palace without Zaha. It's probably going to be 2-1 Fulham, maybe a 1-1 draw because it isn't even that exciting a team. They're both fairly poor teams, not really playing very well, especially uh, in the thought of Palace without Zaha. They, they could really crap out here bad. So if anything, I'm going to go with Fulham for a 2-1 win, but it's probably going to be a 1-1 draw. Final game of uh, the early time slate here. Uh, we have Wolves traveling to Everton. and th The plain and simple here is that Wolves are one of the hottest teams in the league and Everton are one of the coldest teams in the league. So it's tough. Again, Everton are far, far, far better at home and Wolves are far, far, far worse away from home. So um, that's where you have to make your stand here. I'm just telling you what it is right now. Wolves are red hot. Everton's ice cold. Wolves are garbage away from home. Everton's fire at home. So, like, whatever. DFS it up, I guess. Uh, the plays would very simply be, I'm going to avoid Rio Patricio away from home. 4.4K isn't really it. Like, you wouldn't know it from 8.5K, but Doherty was basically the best player in the English Premier League last weekend. Uh, and that was with a clean sheet of three points on top of that. So, like, He's getting five points and dominating games at 5.6K. Like, no. Away from home, no. Like, I don't care how salary sensitive that sounds. There's literally no reason to play him at 5.6K any game, any slate against any team, let alone this one. So, uh, a very simple fade. Don't get caught up in the, the noise that the commentator noise I call it when players are playing really well in real life and they're just not showing up and the same can be said for Johnny if you're going to go with either of the two go with Johnny at least he has a little bit of upside uh, but it, it, along with his salary only 4.4k it just makes no sense to play Doherty and it just bugs me uh, that he's that expensive and again it's like Martinho finally got a 90 minute game last slate and close enough and did something with it but like, you, you, ugh, you just can't risk those minutes. If he comes off, uh, you could be stranded with a uh, low single digits very easily. Like, yeah, these are great scores the last couple of weeks. But against Leicester and West Ham, two of the worst teams in the league at the moment at Everton, it isn't that worse, but it just isn't the place that I want to, especially with how many people are going to be chasing Wolves. Uh I swear, Everton, you better friggin' show up this late because I'm here telling people not to play Wolves. And the fact is that Everton has been really bad. Really, really bad. Like, you may as well just play Jimenez at 8.3K in GPP. Wolves are going to score. Like, they've scored in almost every game this season. So there's no reason to think they shouldn't score against a team like Everton who have been borderline inept at keeping clean sheets all season. Now, the one place I will be turning here is uh, Seamus Coleman at 4.4K. Absolute severe mispricing here uh, on DraftKings. With uh, Dingye out, he may even see an uptick in things. You can take some cigarettes in an 8.9K. It's just a... Uh, like, why hasn't Everton been playing better? If they've been playing better, I could very easily justify taking cigarettes in an 8.9K. Uh, it's like, yeah, 
wish you want. Townsend playing on a team without Zaha, who who literally has one victory in two calendar years without Zaha, or taking Sigurdsson for the same price on a team that's been borderline in after the last month, especially uh, against teams that uh, are up in the standings like Wolves. So yeah, it's it's really annoying, really frustrating slate with just Chelsea, and you have to kind of keep subjecting these next best plays to well, they're not very good plays either. So. Sigurdsson and Townsend, you can go with them. Uh, they're not my favorite, but I think you kind of have to because they fit all the realms of the proper play. Uh, basically, avoid that Everton clean sheet. It's not coming. And uh, I don't even... Honestly, I don't know what to say about this game. It could just as go easily go 2-2 because both the teams have been so bad defensively that there's really nothing stopping either team from scoring multiple goals. But at the same time, they've been so bad in general, like uh, like in terms of uh, scoring uh, consistent goals uh, away from home to find a ceiling. Jimenez, try and tell me he's not going to have crazy ownership after last slate. And uh, that isn't really deserving of it to me. Uh, yeah. Frig, this is annoying. Uh, this game's been bugging me all week. I've been looking at it, trying to figure out. Now that I've pressed the record button, it still hasn't made any more sense, and it's upsetting me. I will say a 1-1 uh, draw. Uh, neither teams do much because that just kind of suits my own distaste for this game. I, you know what? I've been off Wolves really hard the last few slates, and it, keep, it keeps costing me. And I know Everton, despite being... They're one of the biggest home away split teams in the league. So, like, Everton should win this game, and I think they will, so they won't. Let's put it that way. I've been so wrong about Wolves the last few slates that uh, I they're probably going to win 3-2 just to spite me. So, yeah, let's say a, a 2 nothing 2-1 Wolves win. I'm shaking my head because that's just annoying to say. Final game of the slate. Uh, this is a really ugly late hammer. Born with traveling to Cardiff. Again, um, Cardiff have been so bad, but they're better at home. It's the same situation with Everton again. Like They've been two of the worst teams in the league. Actually, let's, let's rewind this all the way back to the very start. Uh... Basically, all the home teams this slate, except for Burnley, are probably going to lose. Uh, every single one of them have a really serious reason to lose. Brighton has just been so bad as of late. Like, so, so bad. And Watford have probably done just enough to not only beat Brighton, but not good enough to help you win a slate. Uh, Chelsea have been absolutely atrocious. Atro atrocious. As of late, uh, especially when you consider their talent, their salaries, their at home, everything. Like, you could very easily, and they're playing the worst team in the league. Like, you should fade them, and they're playing the worst team in the league. That's how bad Chelsea has been as of late. Uh, Crystal Palace is looking for their second win in two calendar years without Wilfred Zaha. What else needs to be said about that? Everton has been lukewarm at best at home uh, in 2019. Uh, Completely inconsistent, can't be trusted, and they're going to be missing a ton of bodies, uh, which is never an easy thing. Uh, so, Cardiff, not a very good team. Going up against a team that is incredibly bad away from home. Like, again, pull your hair out. What do you want to do here? Uh, Bournemouth, not very good away from home. Cardiff, way better at home than they are away from home. Cardiff, absolutely garbage team at the moment. Ice cold. Bournemouth, maybe one of the hottest teams in the league. They haven't let in a goal in back-to-back -back games. Beat the crap out of Chelsea last game. Uh, Boric is coming up out of nowhere to be a relevant goaltender despite playing on this team for like five seasons and maybe seeing three games and not doing anything in all of them. So, yeah, um, Nathaniel Klein's salary has finally jumped up to a place where we just can't play him anymore because he's not going to get more than six fantasy points. So there's no real reason to play him at seven or 5.2K when you know he's not going to get double digits. Like, it's just not on. And that's really what you need from anyone that's over 5K. Uh, again, I want to say, yeah, let's just play Ryan Frazier at 8K, but he hasn't been relevant. Uh uh, and you can say, like, yeah, double digits is great, but 7K, you need more than just double digits. You need, like, 
16 to 20 fantasy points when you get to this range, especially for GPP. For cash, you can get away with it, but now he's dropping down, he's losing minutes. Uh, there's just a whole lot of things not to like, despite their four goal outburst last game, which is aggravating. Uh, basically, what you want to stick with here is just Josh King. Just Josh King. Um, is he my favorite play of the slate? <clears throat> Top five. Uh, is he someone you're probably going to need in GPP? Yes, Cardiff have been that bad. Uh, and he's basically the only forward for Bournemouth right now. Uh, they're scraps. They're uh, working on scraps. Callum Wilson literally had a knee operation just to make sure he can finish the rest of the season. It has nothing to do with he's going to need another operation. Like They're literally operating on scraps right now. So again, Bournemouth aren't that good of a team. Like... There's lots to suggest they should do well. If you look at, if you like, literally put up the blinders and just look at how they've done last game or last couple of games, yeah, Borick's the best keeper ever, and Nathaniel Klein deserves to be over 5K, and both of those statements are completely false. Uh, Stanislas, Brooks, Frazier, Ivy, they all take each other off and ruin each other's minutes. Uh, none of their center midfielders do anything of relevance whatsoever. And Josh King, like I said, is literally it. If they score four goals, hopefully it's all through Josh King. If you want to take some Ryan Frazier in, uh, with Josh King, I can think of worse stacks, that's for sure. Uh, but, yeah, like, it makes just as much sense. Bournemouth haven't been that good to say, oh, yeah, it's all Bournemouth. Like, um, just because they haven't let in a goal for two straight games. I think a lot of people are going to jump all over that. And there's... Cardiff has nothing to offer. Like, they really have nothing to offer. Even their best four play, floor play is their best ceiling player at the same time, and he's going to struggle for double digits every single game. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of Cardiff can be easily faded. Nyasi isn't playing 90 minutes. Like, this is one of the biggest frustrations for me for Cardiff is that this is their starting forward, and these are his minutes. So... It's like you, you just there's nothing to chase there. Uh, Patterson's supposed to be the guy to go with, uh, but somehow he leads the team in goals. I guess he got five shots attempts last game, but like he hasn't had a shot on net for uh, for a while. Uh, so it's like yeah, if you want to take some GPP swings, go for it. But outside of that, you're you're really pushed to take any Cardiff options. So outside of Josh King, I'd probably fade this last game. I'll say 2 nothing Cardiff just to let them keep to up with their clean sheet run. And if you want to go with uh, some Boric, there's probably some uh, worse options. But I think there's a lot better options as well in that uh, mid to higher 4K range for the goaltenders. So yeah, that is really this slate. It's not a fun one. It's not pretty. And it's pretty frustrating. But uh, in terms of overall, I think uh, guys like uh, Pascal Grobe and Johan Berg Goodmanson should be two of the bigger locks this slate. And sticking with guys like Tom Heaton is the way to go with Keeper. So yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Rotopros.com. Get over. Check us out. 30-day free trial. Hit up all our articles in the top right-hand corner. Scroll down. Check it out. Like, subscribe, comment on this video. Uh, I try and get back at everything. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, get at me on our Slack, message boards, anywhere you can find me. Uh, Rotopros.com. Check us out. Thanks a lot, everyone. Good luck this weekend. Uh, hopefully see you at the top. Take care.